from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Pat McCracken, Universal Adjustment Bureau, Johnny. Hi, Pat, what's new? At the moment, Edward J. Rollins, the third. Oh, what about him? One of our companies has a hefty policy on his life, and he sent word he wanted to change his beneficiary, then he disappeared. And you want me to go looking for him? That's the general idea. Oh, look, Pat, you could be wasting dough sending me. Chances are he'll pop up again by himself. Oh, yes, I know. Of course, it involves a little trip to the Caribbean, but if you're not interested... To the Caribbean? I'll be right over. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the time and tide matter. Expense account item one, a dollar twenty cab fare from my apartment to the offices of Universal Adjustment Bureau and Pat McCracken. Now the mention of the cab being did the trick. Sit down. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> now what's the deal? Well, about six months ago, Johnny, Ed Rollins decided to marry a girl named Virginia Blake. And he took out a large policy on himself from one of our companies, naming her as beneficiary. Last week, he apparently changed his mind. Oh. Called from Nassau, said he wanted to remove Virginia Blake as beneficiary. And he was supposed to come to Miami to sign the papers. We had an agent waiting there for him. But he didn't show. What was he doing in Nassau? Well, he had his cabin cruiser down there with uh, three of his friends. Among them, Virginia Blake. Did you check Nassau to see if he's still there? Oh, we checked. His boat is gone. Now, the trail just starts in Nassau, Johnny. Where it'll lead is anybody's guess. Expense account item two, $140 even, air transportation and incidentals to Nassau in the Bahamas. There, I found a man who remembered fueling up Rollins' boat a few days before. He'd heard them talking about working their way down through the Bahamas, skin diving, and then cutting over to Jamaica. They'd mention one place in particular, Crooked Island. Item three, $50, transportation by a chartered seaplane to Crooked Island. I spotted Rollins' cruiser in one of the coves, and the pilot set me down nearby. A dinghy with an outboard motor came over from the boat. It was Ed Rollins. You say you're an insurance investigator, Dollar? Yeah, that's right, Mr. Rollins. Well, what are you doing here? Well, I came to see if you were okay. Me? Who I should not be. You were supposed to meet an agent from the company in Miami last week. You didn't show up. Oh, well, I, I changed my mind. You mean you came all the way down here because I didn't show up in Miami? Well, when a man with a hefty policy in his life disappears, the insurance company starts worrying. Yes, so it seems. Hey, uh, mind slowing down a bit? I'd, I'd like to talk to you before we get on board. Sure. Now, what's on your mind? As I understand it, you took out a policy about six months ago and named a Virginia Blake as beneficiary. Yes, that's right. We're going to be married. Then a week ago, you apparently changed your mind. Well, I decided to think it over some more. That's why I brought the boat down here. What's the trouble? Oh, it's... Well, it's just... Well, I might as well tell you. I began to suspect Virginia's been two-timing me. Oh? With whom? For that, I don't know. Have you asked her about it? No, not yet. Why not? Because I'm afraid she might tell me the truth. Maybe I don't really want to hear it. Ah, oh, I see. Look, Mr. Dollar, we're going to do a little more skin diving here in the cove this afternoon, then shove off for Jamaica around dark. Why not come along? You can catch a plane back to the States from there. Okay. Who else on board your boat? Let's see. Virginia, you know about. The nurse Bill Winslow. Winslow? Yes, kind of a beachcomber at heart. I bring him along mainly to handle the boat. He's real good at it. Anybody else? Oh, uh, Tony Atherton. A worthless sort of guy, but oh. rather amusing company once in a while. Besides, he introduced me to Virginia, so I owe him something for that. I guess. Well, look, uh, you mind introducing me as just an old friend of yours? Yes, that's just what I had in mind. Oh, say, there they are waiting for us on deck. Bill Winslow was tall, lanky, blonde crew cut, deep tan. The kind who looked at home on a boat. 
Tony Atherton, on the other hand, was the kind who was at home nowhere. Or uh, maybe anywhere, as long as he had a drink in his hand. And Virginia, well, one look at her and you forgot where home was. Rollins and Bill Winslow strapped on aqualongs and went over the side to do some skin diving. Tony Atherton, Virginia, and I sat around on deck for a while. I noticed that Virginia didn't seem to be at ease. Atherton noticed it, too. Use a drink, Virginia? No, thanks. <laughs> What's the matter, darling? You bored? No. <laughs> you see, darling? Virginia didn't really want to come on this trip, did you, dear? Just skip it, Tony, will you? <laughs> Seems like Ed and Bill have been underwater a long while. Yeah, I was wondering about that. How, uh, how long do they Ah, no, don't worry. Ed likes to live dangerously. Besides, he's got Bill Winslow, all-American boy, to take care of. Will you lay off it, Tony? Hey, there they are. Hey, wait a minute. It looks like Rollins is oh, in trouble. Get him on board. Here. Hey, quick. Get up. Get up over here. 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 Watch his face, Mike. Easy. Here. I got face, Mike. Get it off. You okay, Rollins? Yes. Yes, I guess. What happened, Ed? Oh, something went wrong with his air supply. Yeah. Sprang a leak. <coughs> Uh, thanks, Bill. And if it hadn't been for you... Oh, I... skip it. Just lucky I was close to you. Look at this rubber tubing. It's frayed through. Yeah, I guess I must have scraped it against some coral. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably it. Two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now for another episode in the life of Sergeant Donald Bellwether, my husband. Hi, honey. Did you fix the windshield wipers? Yeah, I sure did, Reba. How's that? Oh, you fixed them. Good for you, Donald. Thank you, my dear. Well, that's that. Now, if it rains, we're prepared for it, huh? <laughs> I feel better now. Oh, me too. A driver has to see the danger if he expects to avoid it. That's right. And also keep the back and side windows clear in rain and snowy weather. That's right. Oh, how about the horn? It... The horn? The horn doesn't work, Sergeant. Aren't you going to fix it? it... No, I don't think so. Uh, frankly, Reba, I hate horns. Whenever there's a traffic jam, the first thing some guys do is blow their horn. Which does absolutely no good. Of course not. All it does is jar everyone's nerves. No, I I don't think I'll fix the horn. Oh, but now wait a minute, Don. Mm -hmm. Look, supposing we're driving along and, and suddenly we see a youngster on his bicycle headed right out into the street. Sounding that horn will warn him and possibly avoid a tragic accident. Yes, that's true, but... Or supposing we're driving on the highway, and just as we're about to pass a car, that car decides to pull out into our lane and pass the car ahead of him. He obviously doesn't see us, and he won't hear us shout. But one little beep on that horn, and he'll automatically scoot back and avoid a collision. Reba, you've convinced me. Even though it can be a nuisance, the automobile horn is a necessity. Then you'll repair it? Immediately. Oh, that's my Donald. That's my doll. <laughs> And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Time and Tide Matters. Ed Rollins seemed to regard his close shave underwater as an accident, so I decided to play it that way. But I wasn't convinced. Somebody could have tampered with his air hole. We got underway around dark and headed for Jamaica. About 10, I went up on deck for a cigarette. It was a dark night, but from the stern, I could see two figures up in the cockpit. One was Virginia. The other at the wheel, I figured, was Ed Rollins. There was a long kiss. Then they lit cigarettes. In the light from the match, I could see it wasn't Ed Rollins at all. It was Bill Winslow. Dollar? That you? Ed Rollins. I guess he'd just come topside. But I didn't know if he'd seen what I'd just seen. If he had, he gave no sign. Johnny. Hmm? You know that stuff I was telling you about? Maybe cutting Virginia out as beneficiary? Yeah, what about it, Ed? I think you better forget it. I've decided to go ahead and marry her. Well, I, I don't think I could get along without her. Oh, I see. 
have... Uh, look, Rollins, it's, it's probably none of my business, but... I... Well, as something oh, feels... there's Virginia now up in the cockpit with Bill. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I thought she was below. Well, she must be doing some navigating. Uh, yeah. Virginia! Virginia, honey, come on back. Oh. Okay, Ed. Watch your footing. We're rolling a little. Yeah. This is pretty heavy swell. How's Bill getting along up there? Okay. Why? It's about time I relieved him at the wheel. Well, I'll take over if you like. Oh, thanks, Johnny. But I enjoy handling the boat at night. Virginia, honey, you look sort of tired. Maybe you ought to turn in. I will, as soon as I finish my cigarette. Well, I'll take over now. Enjoying the cruise, Mr. Dollar? Sure, sure. How about you? Why not? According to Tony Atherton, you didn't want to make this trip. Tony's very good at remarks like that. Oh, I thought you and he were old friends. Let's just say I've known him a long time. Ah, how you doing, Dollar? Fine, Winslow. How's the boat doing? On course. We should reach Jamaica tomorrow night. Uh, Virginia... I think I'll go below now. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good night, Virginia. Well, you seem pretty much at home aboard a boat, Winslow. It's where I belong. You and Rollins seem to do all the boat handling. How about Atherton? He ever give you a hand? No. No, he's just the passenger type. Well, how about Virginia? Does she handle a boat? She can handle anything. Oh. She's a nice girl, Mr. Dollar. She deserves the best. Maybe that's what Rollins can give her. Maybe. You don't sound convinced. Good night, Dollar. When we reached Jamaica the next night, I decided to do some checking. I went ashore and called Pat McCracken back in the States, asked him to find out what he could about any of them. He was to call me at a restaurant where we were having dinner. Winslow went back to the boat right after the meal, and Atherton drifted out to inspect a few bars. Rollins, Virginia, and I stayed at the table over coffee, but Virginia was restless and edgy. Finally, she told Rollins she wanted to talk to him. They went out on the terrace. And just then, my call from the States came through. Johnny, Pat McCracken. Hi. Did you find out anything? Yeah, yeah. Ran a check on Virginia Blake. I found out she's apparently been paying off for something. What do you mean? She's been issuing checks regularly, a couple of hundred bucks apiece, and always to the same guy. You know his name? Yeah. Tony Atherton. <laughs> out to the terrace, but Rollins and Virginia were gone. I started looking for Tony Atherton. I tried half a dozen bars with no luck. It was after one in the morning when I got back to the boat. Atherton was in his bunk. I woke him up. Oh, what do you want, Dollar? Don't you realize what time it is? Yeah, I want to know why you've been blackmailing Virginia. Wait a minute. It's a pretty ugly word. You're so right. Now look, Atherton. Hello? Anybody aboard? Yeah. Who is it? Inspector Hastings. You make a police. Is this Mr. Edwin Rollins' boat? Yes, that's right. I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. Mr. Rollins has been slugged and robbed. What? Good Lord. Was he hurt bad? I'm afraid so. Touch and go whether or not he'll live. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now for another episode in the life of Sergeant Donald Bellwether, my husband. Donald. Confound it, Reba. I can't find the fountain pen. I've looked all through this desk. Here it is, dear. Mm, here it is. You must have used it as a marker when you were reading this book. Let's see. That's great literary classic. Six-gun showdown at Powder River Gulch. All right. Never mind about my reading habits. Just look at the coverage we're going to get with this new auto accident policy. Mm, let's see. Yes, collision. Mm -hmm, Fifty dollar deductible. Mm -hmm. Fire, theft, public liability, property damage, medical benefits. In other words, we have complete coverage. That's right. Of course, it's going to cost us money. I'm sending the company a check right now. Gee, it's too bad we don't live in Rhode Island. Rhode Island? Why? Well, because then our rates would be lower. Rhode Island has less accidents per capita than any other state. Oh. Well, which state has the highest? Let me see. Uh, oh, here, here it is, Nevada. No, by golly, Nevada's second highest. Alaska has the most. Really? I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just too bad we can't eliminate traffic accidents completely. 
Not only would it save life and limb, but it'd be a lot less strain on the pocketbook. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. These automobile accident policies get more expensive every year just because there's so many costly accidents. Well, I'm glad we've got some good insurance coverage, Donald, but just remember one thing. Oh, what's that, honey? Well, some auto accidents ruin a fender and some ruin a family. Yeah, that's true, very true. But as far as I'm concerned, I don't want any of your old insurance money. I want you here at home, safe and sound. You'll always drive carefully, won't you? Mm, yes, I will, dear. Oh, that's my Donald. That's my doll. <laughs> Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the Time and Tide Matter. Police Inspector Hastings led me down the pier and around the corner of a warehouse about 100 yards from the port. This is where one of my men discovered Rollins, Mr. Dollar. He'd been slugged, huh? With a length of pipe we found nearby. No fingerprints on it, Dems. Rollins is in the hospital in a coma. Apparently, he hasn't more than a 50-50 chance. You said something about robbery, Inspector. His wallet and valuables are gone. I'm afraid we've had quite a bit of that sort of thing around the waterfront lately. Robbery, huh? Maybe. Maybe not. I poked around the pier for a while, but didn't turn up a thing. It was about 7 in the morning when I finally got back to the boat and Atherton in state I told Virginia what happened, Bella. She went to the hospital immediately. Okay, I can talk to her later, Atherton. I still want to know why you've been blackmailing her. Oh, look, you've got proof, Della. Virginia's been issuing checks to you pretty regularly. Look, what's wrong with that? She and I are old friends. I've had bad luck with some of my investments. She's been kind enough to help me out. Now, look, Della, if you're trying to tie me in with what happened to Rollins, you're just wasting time. Am I? Of course, yeah. If you stop this nonsense, I can probably help you. Oh? Look, take a look out this porthole. Come on. What do you see, huh? A stretch of pier? A warehouse? Exactly. Well, what about it? Well, just as I was turning in last night, I heard footsteps on the pier. I looked out the porthole. Somebody was walking along it. As he turned the corner, I could see who he was by the warehouse light. It was Ed Rollins. Oh. A moment later, somebody stepped out of the shadows and followed him around the corner. Bella, that was Bill Winslow. I tell you, I'm not the one who slugged Ed Rollins. But you admit taking a walk last night late. But sure. So what? All right, where'd you go? Oh, along the waterfront. I don't remember just where, and I don't remember what time it was. Along that pier out there, around that warehouse, maybe. Maybe. Look, I wasn't paying much attention where I was going, but but I didn't see Rollins at all. What reason would I have to do a thing like that to him? I can maybe think of one. Like what? Like you in Virginia. Me and... Oh, now, just a minute. That has nothing to do with it. I think it has, Winslow. Get this straight, Dollar. I didn't slug Rollins. <laughs> I kept hammering away at him, but I couldn't get anywhere. Finally, I left him and went up on deck. Virginia had just come back from the hospital. He's still unconscious, Johnny. They say they don't know whether he'll make it. Virginia, what happened last night? When I got through with my phone call at the restaurant, you and Rollins had left. Yes. We walked around town a while talking. Then Ed said he had something to take care of, so he sent me back to the boat in a cab. I came back here and went to bed. I didn't know what had happened until Tony Atherton told me this morning. Uh, mind telling me what you and Rollins were talking about last night? He told me about the doubts he'd been having about me. That he realized he, he still wanted to marry me. Oh? And I told him there were a couple of things he should know about me first. Like Bill Winslow, for instance? Not that it matters now, Johnny, but that was a goodbye kiss. Oh. A couple of months ago, I became very attracted to Bill, but it was no good. You give Bill a boat or a beach, and... Well, his thinking doesn't go much beyond that. And I began to realize that what I really wanted was Ed. What was his reaction when you told him about Winslow? Well, he's a pretty wonderful guy, Johnny. That's why if anything happens, if he doesn't pull through, I don't know what I'd do. And what was the other thing you told him last night? That Tony Atherton had been blackmailing me. It figured. You see, I roomed with a girl once I thought was okay, but she wasn't. Some stolen things were found in our apartment. I thought they were hers. I couldn't prove I wasn't involved. You did time for it? 
Yes. I wish I'd told Ed right at the start. Well, at least you did tell him last night. Johnny, who could have done this to Ed? You don't think it could have been Bill Winslow? Oh, what I think doesn't matter, Virginia. It's what I can prove that counts. And right now, that's nothing. I walked off the boat and along the waterfront. There was a swirl in the channel. The tide was going out. It was almost low. I glanced over at Roland's boats. It was resting lower against the pier now. Suddenly, a couple of ideas started pecking away at me. I went back aboard the boat and found a tide table. According to my watch and the table, it was low tide. Then I looked up the time of the previous row. Yeah. I headed for Tony Atherton's stateroom. All right, all right. So Virginia was buying a little silence from me about her past. So what? When Virginia told Rollins you'd been blackmailing her, he probably didn't like it much. He told her he had some business to take care of. It could have been with you. Now, look. So he went out looking for you around the town. He found now, you. Now, wait What'd a minute. Britain to have you prosecuted, was that it? So you followed him down to the waterfront, sneaked up behind him and slugged no. him. No. You figured you'd killed him. But even if you hadn't, you were safe because he couldn't have seen who slugged him. Look, Dolly, you're talking nonsense. I told you I saw Bill Winslow following Rollins. I saw it right through this porthole. And that's where you hung yourself. What? Take a look out that porthole. What do you see? Why, yeah. The pilings of the pier, it's low tide. Well, so what? And it was low tide at the time of the attack. You couldn't have seen over the top of the pier then. You were lying. Oh, now look, I tell you, I I'll won't try it. Uh, get away from me! Uh, you know, it's funny, Atherton. Shakespeare was more right than he knew. There is a tide in the affairs of men, which sometimes leads to fortune. In your case, brother, you missed. <laughs> Expense account total, including transportation and incidentals home, $403.50. Remarks? Tony Atherton's in jail where he belongs. Bill Winslow is somewhere in a boat where he belongs. Ed Rollins pulls through. He and Virginia will get married next month. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, the plot revolves around Ong's hat. And if you want to know what that means, well, join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Today's story was written by Robert Wright. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Larry Dobkin, Herb Ellis, Tony Barrett, Frank Nelson, and Ben Wright. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, has been a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.